Let's receive right now our daily bread, the living manna from heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, we believe we receive right now our daily bread, the living word of God that is alive and powerful and that is the incorruptible seed that lives and abides forever. Father, I thank you that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth, that you give me utterance, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. And this word goes forth in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit in the hearts and the minds of every person that listens to this. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. And now let's acknowledge by faith the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. And now let's confess over ourselves. I love what um, John Osteen would have the people say is, and, and Frank would have the people say this as well, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I, uh, today, I receive the incorruptible, imperishable seed of the Word of God that lives and abides forever, and I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. So, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you that you give each one of us ears to hear, that you open our ears to hear as the learned, and that you give us the spirit of wisdom and quick understanding of this word in Jesus' name. And that this word accomplishes in me what it is sent to do. So the foundation that the Holy Spirit has been giving us is Mark chapter 4, the sower sows the word. And this is the mystery of the kingdom. He said, if you understand this, then you understand the kingdom. So he taught us about the sower sows the word. The word is the seed. And the word is what Satan is after. Because he said in Mark chapter 4, he says that uh, the fowl of the air came on uh, to the word that was sown on the wayside and they ate up the seed. Well then in the explanation of the parable, he said the sower sows the word and Satan comes immediately to take away the word that was sown in their hearts. So what is the one thing that Satan is after? He's after that word. And then he said, and these are they that are sown on stony ground and we learned that those are offenses. We got rid of those. We cleaned our garden out. And then he said that this is, um, these are they that are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and receive it. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and the word becomes unfruitful. So he taught us, about and this is kind of a review before we move on but he taught us how to cast our cares on the Lord and that cares worries anxieties and fears are from the enemy and we can't afford those so we cleaned our garden out of all the cares all the worries all the anxieties what did he say do with them casting the whole of your care all of your anxieties all of your worries all of your concerns over on him for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully and then after we did that he took us over to psalms 91 
because one of the cares that many, many people have is the safety, their safety and the safety of their loved ones, their, their children, their spouse, their, their family. And so he took us to Psalms 91, which is the answer to that. And as we came down, he said that um, we, let's see, we tread upon, no, that's not it, wait a minute. He said that um, the lion and the dragon will we trample under feet. The lion and the dragon, the young lion and dragon will we trample under feet. And from there, the Holy Spirit said, well, you have to know how to trample him underfoot. But you know, just think about that. If we trample him underfoot, then there's nothing he can do to us. But we have to know. So then he took us over to Ephesians 6. And that's, that's where we are, where he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. So let me read this. And in the power of his might. How do we do that? We simply acknowledge with our mouth, I am strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, his strength, because the word says, let the weak say, I am strong. So I am strong in the Lord. I am strong mentally. I am strong emotionally. I am strong in faith. I am strong in love. I am strong spiritually. I am strong in the Lord, in every area of the Lord, and in the power of his might. And then he said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, and that's the trickeries of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so the trickeries of the devil, that's all he has. He cannot just come in and ransack your house. He, has, he does not have that authority. You have been delivered out of the power of darkness, out of the authority, the dominion of darkness, and translated into the kingdom of his dear son, who is Jesus. So we are living in the kingdom. That's where we reside. That's where we abide, is in the kingdom of God. So... If we are in the kingdom, then why do we have to um, do anything with the devil? Because, like Paul, Peter said, he is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Who gives him permission to devour him, them. But all he has is lies. He is a liar. He is the father of lies. He has deceit. The word says that, uh, I believe it's, this is the way it says it, the old dragon that deceived the whole world. So he has lies and deceits and, um, and trickeries. And we've learned about some of his tactics. One was unforgiveness. One is strife, offenses. All of these things are his tactics. Fear is another tactic of his. He is fear himself. So fear doesn't belong to us. But he says to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the trickeries of the devil. And so that's what we're doing is putting on the whole armor of God. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand or overcome in the evil day, and having overcome all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. What is the truth? It's the word of God. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, and we learned that we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the good news of peace, that we have a covenant, 
of peace with God, not only which, which is tremendous, but our peace with God, but also the peace of God in our lives, in every area of our lives. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the Holy Spirit has been teaching us on that, on, the, on faith, on the shield of faith, on the prayer of faith, wherewith we quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. So those darts don't ever get into you. Why? Because they are thoughts. They are simply just like when Jesus was in, driven into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. And the Word says that he was tempted in all points like as are we. So how was he tempted? Satan put thoughts in his mind. He spoke to him through his mind. He didn't see this uh, guy in a red suit with a pitchfork. It was thoughts in his mind. But Jesus had the word of God. And so, our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We took the shield of faith and, you know, the field... Our field of our shield of faith is like a force field around us as we do what we learned in Mark 11, 22 through 25 is that it is an invisible shield all around us. If we are speaking and believing that that shield is up and put that shield around your spouse and around your uh, children, around your family, and it quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So the next thing he said is to take the helmet of salvation. And that's what he's going to minister to us today. But who, who is to take it? We are to take it. The helmet of salvation. Over in uh, Isaiah 56 no, 59 verse 17. He says, and this was the prophecy of Jesus, for he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. So this was Jesus's armor. Well, you are the body of Christ. And now we take that same armor he has given us. He did not leave us without. He gave us his very own armor. And that's what he said in Ephesians. He said, put on the whole armor of God. This is God's very own armor. It was the armor that Jesus had. And now you are the body of Christ. And it's the very armor that of God. I looked up the word um, salvation in the Hebrew where he said in Isaiah 59, 17. And that means something, something saved as deliverance, aid, and it says uh, prosperity, health, saving health, and welfare, and victory. Victory was one of the terms. I love that. You know, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So the word salvation, when we put on the helmet of salvation, where does the helmet go? It goes over your mind. It goes over your head, all around your head, over your mind. So this is something saved as deliverance, aid, victory, prosperity, health, saving health, and welfare. And we are to take that helmet of salvation and put it on by faith. It is an invisible helmet, but it is a real 
helmet to cover your mind. Praise God. You know, the word also tells us who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. And in Philippians, I believe it's two, he said, let this mind also be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. But we take that helmet of salvation unto us. So let's just do that right now. Father, in Jesus' name, by faith, I take the helmet of salvation and I put it over my mind, over my head, over it surrounds my head. It surrounds my mind in Jesus' name. And this helmet is a helmet of deliverance, aid, victory, prosperity, health, saving health, and welfare. So I believe that those are the thoughts that come to us through that helmet of salvation. So now let's jump back over to Ephesians where he says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And in Ephesians, I looked that word up, the, helm, the word helmet up, in the Greek. Because, you know, the Old Testament is in Hebrew. The New Testament is, was written in Greek. And so I looked that word up, and it said uh, something that encircles the head. Let me make sure I'm reading this right. Yes. Something that encircles the head. So as we take that helmet of salvation, then it totally circles our head. Like I said, it's, it's not like those um, metal helmets that you see from the Roman Empire. This is a supernatural helmet from God. And it's the helmet of salvation. So also, put that on your children. Put that on your spouse. And as you've taken the, the rest of the armor up until this point, then add this part of the armor to it. And he said that you may be able to overcome the trickeries and the deceits of the wicked one. This is something that God has given to us that we need to embrace and take and realize the value of it. So tomorrow, we will take to us the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Well, remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for this word. And thank God this word is enlightening our understanding and is giving us victory in every area in Jesus' name.